Well, welcome back everyone. I am Amy with Amy Astro and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. I tell you what, it's been quite some week out there. Uh, the world has gone slightly crazy. We're all locked in our houses at this moment, you know, for our own protection and whatnot. So curious, what are you guys doing while you're stuck at home? Well, for me, it's about the same as it's always been. I'm going to work, and thankfully my work is inside the house, so I'm one of the, the fortunate few who gets to work in remotely, which I greatly appreciate my employer for allowing me to do, and I've actually kind of enjoyed it, really have. Um, it's funny how many distractions you can get in the workplace, but at home I seem to manage to be getting everything done, with the exception of those crazy cats, you know. Um, they like to jump on the back of my chair, jump on the computer, they like to chase the mouse, you know. They're just being kids. But I can tell you one good thing about all this, my blood pressure is down for a change. So that's a surprising little bonus. But curious, how many of you guys follow me over there on Facebook? And did you see the teaser that I sent out earlier this week? If you didn't, pause this video right now and go follow me over there on Amy Astro as Amy Astro over there on Facebook and take a look at the two images that I put up there. <laughs> So what I have there are two images. They were taken one night apart. They were taken in January. There was no moon out. They were taken from my backyard within the city limits. So it's a very, very bright backyard, even with no moon at all. And I was curious what would happen if with the same telescope, which was the AstroTech 65, and the same camera, which was the ZWO ASI 183 Color Cool. And I took images on one night and then on another night and compared them with one difference. Just one. So stay tuned and follow me over there on the computer and I will show you those two images. And we will discuss what was my difference. Well, as many of you probably figured out, the one difference was filter, no filter. And I'll tell you what, what I used was the Altair Astro. It was the tri-band filter, two inch, and it threaded, it threaded into a filter holder that I use on the camera. And it is designed for light polluted areas and it allows the hydrogen alpha to pass through. Now let me show you this filter here. It's, it's you know really interesting. You look at these filters and you just see this nice little mirror edge and you can kind of in one direction, when I look through this way everything is blue and this, silk, this one's more kind of a green way. But this little filter is pure magic if you live in a light polluted area. Now, in the past, I have used light pollution filters, but I've used the, um, what I used before was this UHC filter, it's a two inch filter also, by Optolong. And I've used this with the one shot color. And, well, I haven't used this filter in, Let's see, since I swapped over to a mono camera a little over a year ago, because I just was not overly thrilled with the data I was getting. I wanted to see some of that hydrogen alpha. And you know, we all love hydrogen alpha. I mean, that just gives us the nice wispy feel to all of our images and give us the extra depth and stuff. But this filter, the UHC light pollution filter, did not accomplish that for me. I mean, it gave me a lovely image but it was just an image that was just not satisfying. It wasn't real full and light, um, but 
the one by Altar Astro, the tri-band, I, I mean, it's everything I could have imagined. So, have you guessed which image on my screen was taken with a filter and no filter? All right, so let's get back to those images and see if we can figure that one out. Well, let me show you how those images were created and what their differences are. And I have them up here on my screen and we've got one night and then the second night. Now this one looks a bit smoother than this image does, but what I want you to take note of is the detail. This image has so much more detail in it than this image. And the difference between these two is, well, let's see, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, so that's not it. Same camera, same telescope. So what is the difference? The difference is the filter that I used. Now, these are from my backyard again, uh, in a very light polluted skies within the city limits. And this image here was taken with no filter at all, just the camera and the telescope. And this image over here was taken with the Altair Astro tri-band filter. And it allowed a lot of the hydrogen alpha data to come on through. So at 30 seconds on Orion's Nebula, this is absolutely incredible. So this is 30 seconds. Let's minimize these. Let's see what 60 seconds looks like. Push these out of the way. All right. These are both 60 second images. You can tell the huge difference between the two of these. It's just amazing. So let's see what the next set. And these are the single images straight out of the camera, untouched, unprocessed. All right. And these are two minute images. And you can tell right here, we are definitely getting blown out some. And it's definitely brighter here, but look at all the extra nebulosity that we're starting to see. And the little running man off to the side is starting to pop through. So let's see what a four minute image looks like. Now four minutes on Orion's Nebula is really kind of insane because look at this, totally blown out. That's unrecoverable data. I mean, it's just white. There is nothing you can do with this image to bring that center back. And this one right here is four minutes with the tri-band filter. Now, oops, it is a bit blown out, but not nearly as horrendous as the one with no filter. But here's the beauty of this. With the Orion Nebula, the best way to accomplish this is using HDR which is why I took four different exposures on this image. And I did the 30 seconds, 60 seconds, two minutes, and four minutes. And what I ended up doing was when I combined them, I combined them as an HDR. But let's look at each individual stack and compare them, okay? Now these were processed the same way, with filter and without filter. And this is our 30 second image that's been fully calibrated and all the way through the background extraction process. It has not been color calibrated yet. And then when we compare it to this one, this one is the one with the filter. So much more detail and color, beautiful pinks going on here. And this one still has a lot of green in it, which, you know, I, I definitely can calibrate that out but it's just not quite as satisfying as this one 30 second image is. So now that we know what 30 seconds looks like, let's see what does 60 look like. And we'll just walk through all of these just to compare. Here is 60 second stack, no filter, and a 60 second stack with filter. All right, you kind of getting the gist here? Now we all have our personal preferences and it's okay to like the other image. All right, here's uh, two minutes. And this one right here is two minutes. And not much to say, it's just, I like this one because look, I can catch all this wispiness up in here that I do not really have in the no filter zone here. 
And let's check out that 240 second, which is four minutes. No filter, and obviously we're blown out, but we've also got a lot of brightness going on here. And this is with the filter. There we go. Still a bit blown out, not a huge deal. But look at all this extra data. I've got a lot of data between these two guys that I don't really see over here in the no filter. So right now, I'm going to say this filter did an excellent job at uh, subtracting out the light pollution in my backyard area. All right, so let's see what does my stack look like as an HDR stack. Okay, now this is with no filter, and that's all those images stacked up. Now I still need to run one more process for HDR, which will tune this down just a little bit. And here is our, oh, we don't want to see that one yet. That's a secret. We want to, oh, and he would be hiding. I want you to see this one. There you go. Can't let you see the finished product quite yet. Still got to tease just a little bit. All right. This is my HDR stack on the tri-band filter. Now this is definitely a warmer image and this one is a cooler image. Um, if you look right through here, let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Look at the detail that I've got right in this area. Let's zoom in on this one a couple times. Come on. Here we go. And just compare the two. You just don't see as much of it over here as you did on the other side. Now let's look up here. Now I can see some cool wispies here, but not a lot. But this one definitely has a lot more coming out. It's just a much, it's a fuller image. It's got more depth and richness to it. Okay, so now you've seen what the stack looks like before I start processing. Let's take a moment and look at the final image when I finished it with Pix and Sight. All right, so here is the no filter final image. All right. Now, really, this is not a bad image considering it was taken in my backyard and there is no filter involved. This is just a straight camera and the telescope. And it's got some great details, but the color tones seem just a little bit off to me. Um, I do pump up the saturation just a little bit. Uh, the blue is a nice touch and you can see the running man doing here really well. And these stars are not overly blown out. In fact, I can even see the split of the star here for double. All right, so are you ready to see what the one with the filter looks like? There he is. Let's make him bigger. Bam! Now, isn't that a beauty? Look at that. I mean, it looks like a rose just blooming. You can see so much depth and richness through here. Let's... uh. Let's blow this one up just a little bit more so you can compare the two. With filter and without filter, look at the reach that you've got with the nebulosity that you don't really have in this image. And right here you can tell that I was not really able to, let's zoom in, really recover the trapezium very well. I mean, I still have some lost data in here that created these really hard edges. But this one, I'm going to say I recovered that trapezium, and you can even see some of the dim star, the stars that are hidden in all that brightness. So overall, I am very happy with this image. So now, this is where they stopped at in Pix and Sight, and I'm going to show you how they look now after I finished my final image. Oops, let's get this bigger here. Over here in Lightroom. There he is. There is the no filter finished over there in Lightroom. Each one of these, they contain four different exposures. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 120 seconds, and 240 seconds. They were both taken with the Astrotech 65 millimeter quad uh, telescope 
And with the ZWO ASI 183 uh, Color Cool Camera. And this one was without a filter. And this one is with the addition of the Altair Astro Tri-Band Filter. It's a um, Tri-Band OSC Filter 2 inch. It says it's the UV IR block plus the anti-reflection coating. And it did wonders. I have LED street lights in my front yard and I have LED street lights of my neighbor in my backyard, you know, that I can see through my neighbor's yard. So even on a moonless night, I can walk safely in my backyard. I can see the grass and can almost differentiate each individual grass blade. It is that bright back there. So this is just absolutely incredible that I can get an image of this quality from my backyard. So I hope that helped you all. I'll let you see what the difference of having a light pollution filter will do for you and it, how much it's to me it's really worth the investment if you're in a light polluted area and you still want to go capture some stars so if you like this video don't forget to like it uh, share it with all your astro friends please subscribe I appreciate all of you I want you all to stay safe stay healthy be responsible and boy I hope you get some clear skies in this time that we're all stuck at home so until next time, this is Amy with Amy Astro, and I will see y'all in the next video. Goodbye, y'all.